Hey everyone, it's Asia Dang. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today. This video is all about all of the things that I've learned since launching my small business in January master plan. And you might be thinking, Asia, you only launched, it's only been two, two months. Like what could you possibly have learned in two months? And I'm here to tell you a lot. Opening up a small business is basically like being thrown over a cliff and you magically having to uh, develop wings to like fly up and survive. I launched Master Plan, which is a weekly planner with budgeting aspects into it. Uh, financial health is a huge, huge part of this planner, but I launched it on January 4th. And again, I haven't been in business very long um, and I've learned a whole bunch of things, but I came into the situation totally unprepared. I hope this video helps out a lot of you to make things go a little bit more smoothly than it did for my launch, because I think we all can agree that it was a mess. So here are the 10 things that I have learned about running a business over the course of messing up, and learning and cleaning up my messes. And now I feel like we're finally in a place where things can now run a little bit more smoothly. Thank you so much to Next Level Ninjas for sponsoring this video. And let's get straight into the list. The first thing that might seem very simple, but is actually very difficult in practice is that you wear a lot of hats. You might think that you're just the founder of your small business, but in actuality, you're so much more. You're the social media manager, you're the customer service service rep, you're the fulfillment center, you're the CFO, marketing manager, SEO expert, which I'm very much still struggle, struggling with, graphic designer, website builder, you are all of these things. Now, there is a learning curve involved because chances are you are not a pro at everything and you may have to pick and choose about which one of these things, these hats that you're gonna be wearing that you wanna concentrate on. So for instance, I hired a photographer to do my first pictures that are on the website and on our social because that's just not something that I am good at. That is something I know for a fact. If I took my own product pictures, then it would be a mess. But I built the website, I'm in charge of the social media, I'm the person you talk to talk to when you email us, I'm my, the only customer service person up there. So for me, I stuck to what I knew I could do and worked with people who could make things so much better than I would if I tried to take over something that I'm just not good at. Pick and choose what's important to you and what you can realistically do for yourself. And then you can either hire out someone to help you out or put other things on the back burner until you're ready to dive on into those. Number two, do not be afraid to ask for help. I cannot tell you how many people helped me with advice or suggestions along this journey. I mean, first and foremost, your e-commerce website, whatever you use, I use Shopify because that was something that was recommended to me by people who own other planner companies. They are quick, even when I have, I have a Squarespace for my own personal website, any question I have, have had ever, they have been really quick to respond, really helpful. So if you have any questions about like what's on the back end on your website or what you can or cannot do, or I'm, oh, I'm emailing them for everything. They have live chat 24 seven, which has been such a lifesaver, especially in the early days of the launch, it was just such a mess. I was always talking to customer service online, trying to get the website and everything working and flowing. And then I also just reached out to a lot of people who are in or around similar businesses to mine. You know that I was struggling trying to find a paper manufacturer for this product, but thankfully I had friends like Blogilates or the owner of Plan Chicli to really help me to find a manufacturer or to find um, equipment that I need to buy to make the whole process so much easier. And I know there's a lot of like focus on competition. You have to beat the competition, but it's been my experience that there is more than enough success to go around. And there are more people out there who are willing to help you than there are who are not. The third tip that I have learned is testing is key. 
Testing your product to one, make sure that it works, and two, make sure that it is a product that your pro customers will actually want and use is probably the most important thing that you have to do. For the Master Plan 2021 Planner, I spent one day building it and then six months testing it out um, with people on my team. And it went through various iterations. It is completely different from what I drew out the first day to what it ended up being today. And that's because I tested out with people who had a variety of backgrounds, some who are avid planners, some who did, did not understand what a planner was at all. And that's why we have that how-to section in the beginning. Um, some people who wanted more space for their um, hourly scheduling, some people who wanted more free space. So being able to test out my planner to various wants and needs has really helped totally transform the planner that it is today. And even now for the 2022 academic planner, I am asking the people in my community, community to help me because even though I'm building an academic planner, I haven't been in school in 10 years. So honestly, I don't really know what the students and teachers need in a planner. So instead of me kind of just building something and guessing and hoping that it'll work and be um, efficient for um, the people that I want it to be for, I'm asking them to test out the planner just so we can make sure that it is the perfect academic planner when it's ready to launch. Tip number four is to figure out what you need to do to get more eyes on your product. For me, since I was doing it 100% on my own, I just decided to go with the route that I was familiar with for the first launch, which is social media. So I concentrated on IG Reels, I post a lot on stories. Uh, what I have found works best, not only on my masterplan.co IG, but also my personal IG, is people like to engage with you. So I do a lot of um, you know, Q and A's and questions and all of that on my stories, which always is really popular, again, on personal and master plan IG. And since I stuck to what I knew and what I was comfortable with, it ended up working for me. And because of that, I am in the 1% of businesses that launched in the first week, uh, in the same week that I launched on Shopify. But what if you don't already have an established following? Because I am very lucky to have across YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, a community of over 1 million people. So if I put something anywhere, someone's gonna see it. But what if you don't have that type of following and it needs to grow and you still need your product to be seen, what can you do? Today I'm partnering with Next Level Ninjas because I think that this can be your secret marketing weapon. Next Level Ninjas can help you gain momentum on multiple e-commerce sites like Amazon, eBay, Etsy. I know a lot of you sell on Etsy and it is available outside of the US too. Next Level Ninjas gives you access to an exclusive focus group that helps you gain visibility by helping you with ranking, reviews, or social media boosts. So first you start by building a campaign for one of your products and you can decide how many units you wanna sell, the duration of the campaign, and more. Next Level Ninjas will blast out your product to their group of testers who will be sent directly to your shop. So they are actually spending their own money to purchase your product. You do have the ability to decide how much of a rebate you want to reimburse the testers. I know it's recommended um, to give 100% rebate back to the testers just as more of an incentive for people to test out your product. Then they'll try it and they'll love it, I'm sure because your product is amazing and then they are required to take one action be it leaving an online review on whatever platform that you choose like an Amazon or an Etsy or an eBay or leave a social media post or comment on whatever you decide IG Pinterest um, YouTube on their blog on Facebook, whatever. Giving you the exposure that you need to increase organic traffic and sales. Now, if they don't love your product or they have suggestions to make your product better or maybe your 
product was sent to them and it was destroyed, so other options for better packaging. If they have suggestions to make your product better, instead of leaving it online for everyone to see, they can directly DM you. So your campaign overall will be successful because one, you'll either get a huge marketing push from people um, testing out your product and leaving glowing reviews on whatever platform that you choose, or you'll have the opportunity to fix any problems um, that the testers may have pointed out. If you think you may benefit from something like this, Next Level Ninjas has a price estimator so you know exactly how much you'll need to spend before signing up, which I know is really important for a small business. So to check it out and get access to my promo code ASIA25, head over to my description box for more information. Tip number five is everything, everything takes longer than anticipated. I mean, Anyone who bought my planner in January knows because they had to wait until February to get their planner. Just because even though I was guaranteed a certain um, day that it would be delivered, stuff happens. I mean, we're in the time of COVID, especially if you're doing production, production everywhere is slow. And if you're shipping from overseas, shipping everywhere is slow. And it's been um, really like, jarring thing for me because just with how I work normally is everything is fast, fast, fast. When I have an idea, I can shoot a video and it's uploaded the next day. I'm just not used to being patient when I need things. So that has actually been a huge rude awakening. It's just everything in general takes longer. So you need to be prepared. Tip number six is stressing out won't make things happen faster. As I have been saying throughout this video, the launch of my planner was probably the worst launch in the history and for sure the worst launch of uh, the worst month of my life. It was a disaster. Nothing was going right. I was constantly stressed. I was barely sleeping and it was just terrible. And I say this not to like scare you away from starting your small business, but just to mentally prepare yourself for what might happen when you launch yours. And while I'm someone who's, you know, in all honesty, someone who's easily stressed, the one thing that I kept on telling myself was that everything was ultimately out of my control. So stressing out over manufacturing, stressing out over shipping, stressing out over customers being mad at me because they're waiting for a month for their product, which I totally understand. Those are all things that are honestly out of my hands. I did the best that I could. I was honest with everyone about timeline. I did what I could, but I, stop stressing over things that I couldn't control. We are rolling on with the tips. Tip number seven is shipping is expensive. As a customer, you really have no idea how expensive shipping is. You don't. And y'all don't wanna pay for it, which I, I mean, I totally get, I'm the same. And shipping is, if anything, it's just more mental. I mean, you'd rather pay $10 for product and $5 for, for shipping versus $5 for a product and $10 for shipping, even though ultimately they are the same price. It's a mental game and I was totally unprepared to play that mental game. So for shipping my two and a half pound planner from Cali, it costs roughly like $18 to ship to Hawaii and to the East Coast, $10 to ship somewhere like on I guess the West Coast a little more if we're going up north a little bit. And then international, just forget it. It's like 40 plus dollars, which is more than the planner in all honesty. And while I'm appreciative of every single person who bit the shipping bullet to buy my planner, despite how expensive the shipping costs was and is still currently, I know for a fact that my shipping costs turned off a lot of people from buying my planner. The prices on my website are automated from Shopify, UPS, USP, PS, DHL, 
that's the amount you're paying in shipping is the amount I am paying on shipping. So I know like it's really hard to hear that because a lot of us are used to paying like getting free shipping or $5 flat rate shipping. And honestly, that's something I probably should have done and I will probably do that for um, maybe the next couple launches. But what people do in order to give you a lower rate on shipping is that they increase the price of the product. If something actually costs $5, but the shipping is 10, maybe they'll increase the product to $10 so they can keep the shipping at five. And that's not even something I remotely thought of doing before launching my product. Just know that shipping in general is expensive and as a customer, if you're receiving a free shipping rate or a flat shipping rate, just know that it is at the cost of you paying more for your product. So something I didn't know, something that I know cost me um, sales, but learning experience and going forward, we will be changing that. You need to do the math about how much it's gonna cost you to just start your business. And I'm not just talking about the cost of your product. You have website costs, equipment maybe, printers, um, packaging, marketing, taxes. Maybe you need someone to do graphic design or someone to build out your website for you. Thank you cards, business cards, photographers, the list can go on and on. So you need to do a deep dive again, figuring out what you can and can do yourself and then figure out how much money you need to start your business. It only cost me maybe a couple thousand to launch. Um, the master plan and that's because I worked with my friends who are like the best so photographers and all that stuff So I spent money on things that I knew I needed to spend on and then again I did other things myself like I built the website out myself Which is normally very expensive But I was willing to put that money someplace else where I thought it would be more useful and do what I could for free tip number nine We are almost done with our list is to listen to your customers if you want to continue Need to sell product you need to listen to your customers because they're the ones that are going to buy your product so if they have a way or suggestion to make your product better you better listen and i know it's hard to take criticism um, especially if if your customer approaches it in like a really aggressive way, which hasn't been my case. Everyone has always come with, um, you know, I really love your planner, but um, I did this to make it easier for me. So maybe it's something you might wanna implement in future planners. So I haven't come across a very aggressive customer yet, um, but I did get some angry emails about them waiting. So I totally understand that they are out there. The people that are giving you, taking the time to give you suggestions about how to make your product better it's to help you, not to insult you. I always encourage the people in my community to give me advice on my product. Again, that's why I'm doing this tester for the academic planner because I would love to hear the advice of people who would actually use it um, before kind of selling it off to the masses and not giving them a product that they would actually use. But just remember again that it is still your company and it can be really overwhelming fielding advice from different people depending on what they want. So just receive their comments and their suggestions. Think about it, whether it is what you want and works best for your product and your goals for the product, and then you can either implement them or not. And then finally, the 10th tip that I've learned after launching my small business is it gets easier from here. And thank God, because it's been a mess. Thankfully, all of I, I'm hoping all of my business woes has already happened and it happened while we were small when we first launched. So people were a little bit more understanding about um, waiting for the planner and all the messiness that occurred. So I'm hoping all of that is out of the way and we can just move forward. I think it's I think we will because we've learned a lot. As you can tell that during this video, we've learned a lot in the past two months. So we can now move forward and have smoother launches and more successful products. Anyways, that is it. That is my 10 things that I've learned since launching my business. I hope that it helps you either as a business owner or as a customer to really understand um, what a small, running a small business is like. And if you're a customer, just be a little bit more understanding about how much work it goes into because the majority of us are doing it by ourselves. We're probably the ones fielding your customer service requests, 
posting on IG, fulfilling your uh, product and all of that stuff. So if you're a customer, just be a little bit more patient if you are purchasing something from a small business, because just know that we are trying our best. And um, yeah, that's it. I'm Aisha Vang. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you next time. Bye.